Good evening, this is Dr. Curry. This is Kobe Owens. And welcome to The Source. I just want to say we have a new look here at The Source, and we're trying to upscale our game so that you can certainly take us serious with the reliable news that we continue to bring to you every week. I appreciate all the comments that you are making. I'm sure Kobe as well. So I just wanted to let you know that we are definitely trying to up our game so that we can make sure that you can take serious the things that we're discussing. Kobe, this week was really, really a very... Um, 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 hard week for us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people may have a uh, feel that, you know, we, we try to pick on the city and things of that nature, but really it, it, it's not that. This week, to hear that just this week there mm -hmm. were six shootings, some ended in murder, um, is really a sad day. Yeah, so, you know, this past Saturday um, it was a very sad incident. A young man who was turning 14, it was his birthday, mm. um, was gunned down on Sitz and Madison. Wow. Uh, um, a 20-year-old was also shot and it is still in critical condition right now. Um, but again, that was the start of Saturday and it started um, with violence and it ended with even more violence with a quadruple shooting on 27th and West Street wow. um, where four people ranging from the age of 25 to 43 um, were all shot and two of them um, are in stable condition and two are in critical condition but again this is just a cycle um, that we keep seeing here um, and it seems as though um, there's no plan to address it at all. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things, you know, I, 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 I constantly and we constantly ask if we can just get a plan together. And, 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 and it appears that it's going on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. It is not. And I want to say this to uh, whether I'm talking to the mayor or to the city. I don't think neither the two of us are blaming the person like the mayor or the chief of police. But because of leadership, and, the, and, and what they supposed to be doing is why the blame is being placed mm -hmm. there. What are we going to do? You know, J Jim, uh, not Jim Sills, but uh, the, the mayor before, after him was um, Mayor um, Baker. Baker. He, he made it clear we can't arrest our way out of this. We need a plan. I still stand firm that there's a plan that's needed. Yeah, I mean, there's been tons of plans proposed that this administration is completely ignoring. Um, and, and one of the residents, you know, I, I was watching a video, um, and one of the residents said, she was very passionate about it. She said, you know, this is a terrible situation. Mm -hmm. What happened last night was a terrible situation. It's just sad. Um, but the mayor needs to get out here and do something for the community, not just development. Um, and if he doesn't do anything for the community, everyone's going to end up dead. That was her word. Well, if you listen to, now I didn't hear those comments, but I'm sure they were stated. If you listen to what she's saying, yeah. it's the reality because, you know, just last week, an executive with WSFS yeah. was driving home going up a particular street to get on to 95 and she ran into the line of fire and died. Yeah. What will the how will the city respond to businesses that feel I can't even come I don't want to stay in the city. Yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, you can't just sit down and be like, "Look, we're sorry that happened, but this is the lowest gun violence we've seen." in the last few years. Well, it's low compared to the last few years because it was so high the last few years. Mm. It's still a issue and you have no plan to address it. And honestly, WSFS, mm -hmm. W-S-F-S, I'm sure they are pissed. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they are deeply considering potentially leaving the city of Wilmington, mm. which is going to be devastating to so many people here in the city of Wilmington. They are a Wilmington bank um, that has grown. Yeah. Um, they employ a lot of people right here in the city. That's going to um, take away jobs. That's going to take away um, the, the investment that they have in the community mm. and that they have invested in so many areas. Um, so, you know, it needs to be Everyone needs to set aside their differences, their petty differences, yeah. Yeah. and come to the table. It has to be everyone around the table. It cannot just solely be a police chief who um, believes that his tactic is going to work if he just keeps pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Mm -hmm. um, and it can't be a mayor who's going to back him no matter what. It has to be all of the city council, the mayor's office, the police the force, citizens. the community, yes. the yes. faith leaders, mm -hmm. and the yes. center point. The center, the, the one that connects them all, 
is the young youth of Wilmington. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, has to all be around and, and working to get this done. You have to talk to the people who are in the streets. You know, our church, we bank with Wisfis. Most of our accounts mm -hmm. are at Wisfis. And I went in the other day um, and I, I spoke with one of the vice presidents at the local bank and I just shared with him that my condolences over the sad loss of one of their you know, colleagues. And he was shook still. Mm -hmm. He was still shook. Said she's, He says to me, all she was doing was riding up the street to get on to 95. She wasn't, she wasn't involved in anything. But this is what happens when there is no plan. Correct. So I'm going to agree with you in that we really need to find a way to come together. And I keep using the word we, but it's not in the we. It's in the leadership of this city. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I call on Trippy, uh, Congo, to, to have a conversation with the mayor and say, let's put all the guns down. Let's now plan. Because to, to, not to plan literally is to plan for failure. Mm -hmm. And we have to figure out how. Now, I'm not going to put a lot of emphasis only on the young lady who has transpired for the vice president for Wisconsin Bank. Our young children, a 14-year-old. On his 15th birthday. Unbelievable. On his 15th birthday, right before he was supposed to go to school. And I just want to say a few things about that. One, it was right across the street from a community center. Wow. Um... And it's the city's only community center, Hicks Anderson. But we have a lot of good, well-run community centers mm -hmm. throughout the city. Right. But even though they're well-run, they're underfunded. Yes. We had an opportunity, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, where millions of, of dollars poured into the city. Mm -hmm to invest in these community centers so that they can have program expansion, um, so that they're able to really meet the ones who need the help mm -hmm. where they're at, not just take all the good kids in and leave everyone else out, but actually get to the root of what community centers are, are supposed to be about, mm -hmm. and really invest in these. But the mayor's administration chose okay. not to do that. I don't understand. They chose to do, which is important, a housing project. Put their money in other places, in development and stuff like that. Okay. Look, you're not going to solve gun violence by just looking at it from one lens. Mm -hmm. Gun violence is a multi-complex issue mm -hmm. that stems from social ills. True. Like lack of good jobs, lack of housing. But also, there's lack of guidance and there's lack of community resources. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what you should really be looking at and how you can fund these groups more. Fund groups that are working for gun, gun violence prevention. Yeah, you know, and, and I don't mean to cut you off, mm -hmm. but you know, that's interesting because I noticed that a lot of the programs that were funded, it seems like they got defunded. Uh, under this administration, yes, and a lot of times I think it was because they felt that you know the the people who were running it, like a black person who didn't have all the, the 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 whatever whatever, they just decided not to have it. There were some programs I know Bishop Morton and and also Pastor D and a couple mm -hmm. others had where they were really effective because they know the streets. Yep. And you know I I'm gonna be honest with you, there were times I disagreed with Pastor D and I said look I just think he's too far to the to the left, but as I look at the, the, the absence of leadership. I'm saying we need that type of person mm -hmm. who know the streets, who understand the streets, to get on the streets, and that he needs to be funded to be able to bring some results. Not only him, now there's many other people right. who are doing a phenomenal mm -hmm. job. Um, um, I, we can name many organizations, but they have, they've been defunded, and now we're just left. Well, here's the thing also. While people may be out in the streets at the end of the day and they're not in the church like our, our older generations mm -hmm. are, they still have respect for faith leaders. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they're, they're not going to just completely ignore our faith leaders. And I think that's why certain faith leaders in the community have been so successful in reaching out to communities mm -hmm. and really bringing people in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not blaming the faith leaders. Okay. I'm blaming the fact that there's no plan on how to strategically work with the faith leaders. Uh -huh. It's um, all going to a right, plan. Exactly, yeah. right? So everyone plays their role. Right. Um, and I think, you know, 
a, f- a, a leader, a community leader, a faith leader can only do so much if they're being iced out mm-hmm. by the police department. Mm-hmm. If they're being iced out by the mayor's office. Mm-hmm. So now they're not getting all the information they need to really try to solve some of this stuff that's happening. Some of these petty beefs. And you know, uh, uh, another sad thing, I heard some young kids talking the other day. Mm-hmm. And this was right after this young man was killed. They were comparing with one another what their outfits would look like in their caskets. Oh my gracious. Instead of talking about what they're going to be wearing on their first day of school, um, going back to school, period. That's what they were talking about. And they were doing it in a light of, it, I don't even think they realized it, but that comes from a long um, exposure to trauma in yeah, your community yeah. where you normalize yeah. not making it until your 18th birthday. When you normalize you know, the possibility that you will be in jail or be in a casket, so at, at a point before you make it to retirement age, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, that is very concerning to me. And anyone who hears that, mm-hmm. it's going to hit you hard because it hit me hard. I'm just hearing it from you and it's like, oh, I can't believe this. So we need, as a, a again, I'm, I'm just going to keep saying, I've said it at city council, I've said it everywhere. We need to put aside our political differences. Mm-hmm. And our petty differences. And our petty differences. yeah. yeah. And come together and get something done. But it starts with the mayor, and I have to say that with all due respect, because there's no way in the world anybody is going to come together if the power does not come together. Right. I, and, and I appreciate what you said a few seconds ago. You can't blame the faith community leaders, because at some point I start blaming that they need to come together a little bit stronger. But if, 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 if they don't have the support, if they're iced out, it becomes in, impossible. Mm-hmm. Just like with the Wisfist young lady, the vice president, we had our show. I didn't even know about the murder yeah. until but, after the show because they hid it, or can I use that word, hid it? They did not, it was not out in public until she had died. Right. This is unacceptable. Mm-hmm. This is, a, is what Trump did and does even now. We have to be exposed we have to we have to be open yep. to be able to share some of the things that are going on so that we can get help. Mm-hmm. Because again, it is our community. When I look at how fifty five percent of Wilmington is African American. Mm-hmm. We have to do something about our these deaths that are going on. And we have to do a better job um, at when people try to hold you accountable, not taking a personal, but you're in yeah. this position. Yeah. So you have to do your job. Um, so we have like I said, we have a lot of work to do. Um, and you know, my door is always open. People can get in touch with me pretty easily. Um, but there's some other people who are doing a lot more work in the community when it comes to gun violence prevention, um, who on, who's on the ground, who needs to be around the table. Yeah, be around the table, when the table, when will the table be open? That's true. That's the question. Mm-hmm. You know, when will the table be open? When will the opportunity to, to, to really talk about our community and effective change without there being a perception that all they want is an offering mm-hmm. or a do- or a, a grant. Um, but if, if, if the report card is to be given, which we will be giving report cards out, but if the report card is to be given, sure, in some areas this administration will, will score very high. But what I love about report cards and marking periods is that you get a cumulative grade point average. Yeah. <laughs> and you cannot get an A in one area and an right. F in another because then you are still a felon student. Mm-hmm. I, I just really think this is just sad. Six shootings in one week. and, and, and one day. And, uh, in one day. In one day. I thought it was the week. No, it was, it was Saturday. It, the, the morning started off bad and the night ended even worse. Wow. Wow. What are we going to do, Kobe? You say you say get a get a plan together, but yeah. what are we going to do what, while we're waiting for a plan? We we have definitely two more years of this administration, mm-hmm. and then the question becomes: if he decides to run again and win, then we got four more years. Right? How do what wh- wh- what alarms need to be sounded? When will if I can say this to the community who watches us every week? When will you stand up and say, even though it wasn't my child, it was my child, and and, and, and a plan has to be presented to the community because you know this whole thing about who voted for who is is irrelevant yeah whoever is in the seat is the one who won the office and the one who holds the office holds the accountability mm-hmm. and we definitely we definitely have to begin to just hold people accountable but how right. do we hold people accountable when they just turn a deaf ear and say forget about them 
Forget about them. I, we're going to do what we do. We're going to keep building skyscrapers. Yeah, I think you look at how you can strategically um, disrupt their agenda, disrupt the way they want to go with things mm. until they listen to the community. Um, so if that means, you know, having to take families of gun violence um, victims to um, every ribbon cutting throughout the city um, to bring it right to the mayor's face, then start doing that. We, need um, to, we Thank you for saying that, but we do need to, while we are waiting for a plan, if we mm -hmm. don't see something start mustering, we probably need to start organizing. Yep. It's to, I think, because I think some people are still saying through the TV right now, you know, Curry, um, um, Kobe, what can we do? Mm -hmm. And I think we have a responsibility to start saying, you know what, it's time to disrupt normal. Yep. And I, and I think that's something I want to be thinking about a whole lot. And I know you don't have a problem with disrupting normal. <laughs> I don't need I always love getting in some good trouble. <laughs> yeah, there um, you go. But, you know, start thinking of ways to do that in a yeah. strategic way that keeps it on your message but also brings light um, to it to what's actually happening in the community being ignored. Okay, so we, we definitely gonna um, stay on top of this. I thought this week, you know, when I heard about all the mur all, all the shootings, that, that did bother me. Mm -hmm. um, didn't know it all happened in one day though, because when I read things, I just read it as it's happening. And, and then I was well aware of the Wisfits after our show. Right. And, and I just felt so bad, especially since I know so many of them, mm -hmm. uh, especially downtown branch. Um, what, well, now we are getting to um, a place where I guess it kind of fits into this whole notion. What are we going to do with these politicians who are not listening to the, their their um, constituents? Yeah, so it is election time right now. We're um, two weeks out um, from Tuesday, and actually, um, you know, we're actually two days out from early voting. Mm -hmm. Which, if you live in the city of Wilmington, you can go um, to the Riverfront, Justice and Street, um, and vote there. Mm -hmm. Your vote is your voice. Mm -hmm. It's your way of saying which direction you want things to go in. Um, but you can't stop there. You can't just let it be your voice. If you see an issue in your community, make sure um, you're reaching out to individuals and letting them know that this is how we can change it. Uh, we can bring, you know, if need be, we can bring a new, fresh perspective in. Um, or if someone is doing the right thing and they've been fighting, um, but because they've been fighting against the status quo, now they're facing a, a challenge. Um, making sure you go and support that person as well, too. Um, because we are in the 21st century, because we have more technology and stuff like that, um, you can look up candidates. You can look up at um, ivote.de.gov here in Delaware, mm -hmm. see what district you're in, and then look up who's running in your district. Um, and that's the best way to do it. Form your own opinion and, and figure out who best works for you and make sure not only you go out and vote, but make sure you take three, four, or five people with you. Um, call your, you know, call your grandma, call your aunt, call your cousin. Um, remind them that you know it's election time, and make sure that they're voting as well. But and I want to add to that: How do we get people interested in going to some of these meetings? Because what I've noticed, a lot of the activists will go to the meeting to represent people and a lot of times the politicians don't pay them any mind yep. because they feel like that's just one person that's just Kobe you know it, it is him yeah. uh, but I think some people some of them are going to get a rude awakening but the, the 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 thing I'm trying to also add and I share this with our political action committee here at, at East Zion is that we have to get people actively involved in the process mm -hmm. they need to go to some of their civic association meetings they need to voice their opinion and fight against some of the politicians who just want to just push the agenda and carry the water of certain other people mm -hmm. because that's that's you go to these meetings you only see the activists you don't see the community and a lot of times the politicians saying well the whole community is just the three people yeah i mean that is very true um i work in policy i work in advocacy um so i have the privilege to to make sure i'm at these meetings mm -hmm. but when i'm there i'm not representing myself i'm representing an organization i'm representing everyone our organization represents mm -hmm. Um, so that's the working class people who couldn't make it. Um, the, the mom of three who has to go to daycare and can't make it to that committee meeting. Um, the dad who's working, you know, late night yeah. driving mm -hmm. to put food on the table for his family. He can't make it to that meeting. So um, 
we take what we're hearing, right? We're taking from who we're engaging with, the thousands of people we engage with, and formulate that into where we need to be as an organization, um, as a civil rights organization, and push forward there. Um, and, you know, we work with key partners. There's a, a ton of amazing grassroots organizations that are doing work. Um, you have the Homes Campaign, which Cheyenne and Brandon have been in here yeah. to talk about. Yeah. Um, you have Campaign for Fair Policing. You have Campaign to End uh, Debtors Prison, which is uh, talking about the fines and fees that people have to deal with, especially coming out of our, our justice system. Um, you have groups that look to, to make sure that our schools are more equitable um, and everyone has a, a fair opportunity to learn on the same level. Um, it, it, it's just so many different groups out there that we work with um, who have their, um, their ears to the street, to the community as well, too. Um, and then we, we share resources, right? So um, they can do the, the base building, the grassroots building, um, and then we can help with the policy and formulate what they're hearing as well, too, into policy that's rooted in community-driven action. Yeah. Well, I, I, I bring that up today because I really believe that a, a, there are several politicians who represent the local Wilmington as well as in, in, within the state of Newcastle County. And I'm not sure if they are more interested in the politics of their, whether they are council, whether they are representatives, I'm not too sure if they are representing the districts that they're in because when I walk in Wilmington mm -hmm. and I see some of the blight and, and the problems that are going on, how can a person vote the way they vote? Yeah, That's really where I am right now. Yep. I mean, they vote in favor of this, that, and the other. And I think we were very effective, and we may have to bring it back when we start. And the city council comes back, so, we, so I'm very happy about yes. that. But 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 I think we're gonna have to start exposing a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, like that, that that whole eminent domain thing. The more that got exposed, the more people start saying, "Oh wow, really." And, and they begin to, to, to get engaged. And that's why I brought that up, because I'm, I, I think sometimes people get elected and they forget who elected them. Yep. And, 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 but, but even if I didn't elect you or didn't choose to vote for you and you won, you still have to represent me. Correct. And I think that's what, what is missing right now. Anything else you want to give on that? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. I well, I, I want to just jump to something, a feel-good moment. I wouldn't call it a feel-good moment if it's going to a national level. Uh, we, we, we have... Um, uh, the Democrats. Now, I was the one who was saying, I don't know if they're going to lose the House. You're the one saying, oh, yeah, they're going to lose the House. And they may still. But they're feeling a little bit better right now. Mm -hmm. What's going on with them? Yeah, so uh, Tuesday, you had two major states um, have primaries, and there was a few special elections as well, too. Um, Florida um, and, and New York. Now, in New York, um, all eyes were on former representative Anthony Delgado's mm -hmm. old seat of, of New York 19th district. Why? Because this district swings back and forth. Right. It, it has always been a determiner of uh, how the election's going to go for which party. Now, Anthony Delgado stepped down as a U.S. rep to become the lieutenant governor of New York. Yeah, is he a Republican or a Democrat? He's a Democrat. Okay, go ahead. Uh, young Afro-Latino. Mm -hmm. He stepped down, which triggered a special election. Now, last night, because of redistricting and everything, was their regular primaries for their seats as well, too, and they held a special election for that seat that night as well, too, for the current drawing of the district, and then they'll have an election for the new drawing of the district. Mm -hmm. What happened last night in a very competitive race, um, where polling pretty much all showed it flipping, a Democrat won by 2%, mm -hmm. which doesn't seem like a lot, but it was a Biden plus two district now. Um, this is huge because it shows that the, the tides are turning a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So now, in some states that are overall blue, but they have some swing districts, it looks better for some of those incumbent Dems. Mm. Now, not saying we're gonna hold all the seats, right? Um, you know, there's definitely gonna be seats that, you know, we're just going to lose no matter what. But for, for this area, I think the key takeaway is 
it may not be as bad as it was going to be a few months ago. And I talked about, they said, if gas prices go up anymore, then take whatever your your polling numbers, whatever you finished with last year, take five percent points off. Mm. And that had us losing about forty five seats. Um, based off of where we're going with some of these major legislation passing, um, and also I feel as though um, the dismantling of Roe versus Wade has yeah. fueled yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Pairing those two up together. Um, I still think we're going to lose the House, um, but I think it's going to be a closer margin. So I, I, I feel as though overall it's going to be probably a net of 10 to 15 seats gained by the Republican Party instead of close to 40 and 50. How many, how many, re, how many Republicans are uh, receipts to there now? There is 208. 208. How many Democrats? 218. So you, you need how many in order to gain... 215. 215. So, so you, you, I, I see why you keep saying yeah. that. Okay. So we, we're going to be watching. That. Right. And, and it's still, you know, because the margin's already so slim right now, mm-hmm. it, it, you know, I still see the house swinging. Um, and, it, you know, it, it's not also the, the national trend. It's also racist gerrymandering happened in a lot of states where like Louisiana and Alabama should have got two black districts which but they knew they would have been democratic so they subverted the supreme court and made sure that they couldn't do that right mm-hmm. um they broke up black districts in um uh, Michigan and Wisconsin and Florida mm-hmm. um to take away seats as well too so Wow, the it's politics. All play in. Yeah, the politics of of the state, the, of the of the the local, of the federal is just really, really brutal, as yeah. they say. And and I'm and I just sit back constantly and I'm watching and I'm saying, man, well, what's going to be next? But um, I, I I'm still got a little optimism. I, I believe the Senate will stay, but I believe I'm still standing yeah. on that that we may get a miracle because when you're in a democracy that like we're in right here, they don't like when you take their rights away. And I think that's what's happening. Even people who don't even believe, don't even do abortion. Mm-hmm. They, you don't take a person's right. And, right. and, and there's a group of you know people who, who did it. It was all strategically done because Mitch McConnell really strategically took care of that. Mm-hmm. He got his judges in. He made sure he held up Garland and others to ensure that the, the pathway of getting rid of Roe versus mm-hmm. Wade would happen. And people are upset. Well, you know, Kobe, thanks so much for this first part of our show. Uh, we got an opportunity to cover several things and. Today, uh, we will um, move forward, so we'll be right back. And we're back. Well, Kobe, it's that time of the show. Tell us what's going on with Kobe's Corner. Yeah, so a little history happened on Tuesday night. I know I talked about New York a little bit more, but I want to talk about Florida. Um, A young man by the name of Maxwell Alejandro Frost um, won his primary for mm-hmm. Florida's 10th district, replacing Val Demings, who's running for U.S. Senate, mm-hmm. um, against Marco Rubio, won his primary um, to become the first Gen Z, um, Generation Z, Z uh-huh. um, member to win a primary for U.S. Congress. Now, the district is overwhelmingly Democratic, which means most likely um, he has a 98% chance that he will be the next congressman from that district and be the first Gen Zer in Congress. Now, before you go any further, because I want to ask a couple questions, because mm-hmm. my seniors are saying, well, what is, what is he talking about? So he ran, uh, uh, who, whose seat is it currently? So it's Val Demings. Okay. Val Demings is the current representative right. from that area. It's Orlando area. Um, she has decided to retire from okay, the U.S. That's House, what I was going to ask you. Okay. Um, and she is running for U.S. Senate okay. for the entire state of Florida against Marco Rubio. Against Marco Rubio. And what do you think her chances are? She has pretty good chances. She has a background that I think really appeals to a lot of people there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's going to be close. I think Rubio is still going to win that race. Why? Um, for the sole purpose that Florida has gone so much to the right, um, outside of key areas like Miami. Um, um, Browers County, Orlando, and areas like that, it has gone um, very much to the right. But with this whole abortion thing and their new law that went on and how he put his voting on, don't you think that would harm him? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't think so. I think it's going to make it closer, but I don't think it's enough that he, he goes down. Now, talking about the Gen Z, mm-hmm. uh, or 
Now, he, he, he won that election. Um, and because he won the primary, you're saying you believe there's a 90% chance that he would win right. the whole um, election. Um, what is he more? Is he more liberal? Is he more... Um, he's progressive. progressive. He grew up in... Uh, he's a uh, person who comes from the Parkland shooting. Okay. Um, he was very active with March for Our Lives. He was their organizing director. Mm -hmm. Then he went on to work for the ACLU. Okay. Um, he's done a lot around immigrant rights, um, just civil rights, voting rights. Um, and, you know, now he looks to take his experience to Congress mm -hmm. um, and help get some things done there. Um, he had a well oiled machine. He raised the most money, raising $1.4 million. Mm -hmm. um, his next closest person was a state senator for the area. Um, Senator Bracey, um, he only raised $400,000. So it was a clear um, divide in use of social media to really bring in a war chest he needed. Um, but again, the, the age limit to be a member of Congress is 25. He just turned 25 last month. Oh, wow. He made the cut. I'm glad. And he won. And he won. And, and so I keep hearing you talk about the finances that they raised. Does that really d d determine? Because 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 that's what I'm worried about with DeSantis. Uh, he, he got a hundred and <laughs> how much you say? He has a hundred and thirty five million dollars sitting in his war chest So, so um, go for governor. So it's very hard to overcome. Now, you can do a lot with a little. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and. and I've been a part of campaigns like that that have won, right? I've been a part of campaigns that have had more money and lost, mm -hmm. right? Um, money isn't the final determiner, but at a certain point, it does play a okay. huge role, and it's hard to keep up. Um, now, DeSantis is sitting on 135, um, and Charlie Kreis, uh, who just won the primary for governor, he's a former governor in Florida, so that helps him. Uh, he was a Republican governor. Mm -hmm. Then he turned independent. Now he's a Democrat. Um, he was a member of Congress, mm -hmm. and now he's running to reclaim his old seat as governor of Florida. So you kind of feel that it didn't matter who ran, he, he or the other, his candidate, uh, that DeSantis was probably going to beat him. Yeah, unfortunately, DeSantis is very popular in Florida, um, especially amongst um, the Cuban population okay. in southern Florida mm -hmm. um, and the re retiree population um, throughout um, the coastal areas of Florida. Yeah, because you know I call him a little Donald Trump because yeah. he, he's just more professional, had a better education, he and but but he he cut through just like him. Yep. And and I just feel feel sorry for them. And he got into a fight with Mickey. I, who gets in a fight with Mickey Mouse? Right. You know, I, I just don't know. And the funny thing about it, he wasn't going to run for governor. Um, he was going to continue to run for his U.S. Congress seat, and uh, Donald Trump endorsed him for governor, and he wasn't even in the race. Um, so he sat down, talked to his team, and switched and decided to run in 2018. Who is he? Ron DeSantis. Oh, oh, okay. When he ran. Okay. In 2018. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he's continued to build the, that war chest up, which, again, uh, it, it's a double-edged sword, right? So he's pulling so much resources. Other candidates throughout the country are struggling to get mm -hmm. those resources, um, as well as Donald Trump is fundraising so much, it's it's hurting the rest of their base. So it benefits Democrats um, that those two are doing so much fundraising. Okay. All right. Anything else on your agenda? Yeah. So um, another huge thing um, that just was announced, um, and, you know, people have been pushing the Biden administration to do something. He had, he had campaigned on it, um, and he came out on um, Wednesday and announced that um, they will be um, – strategically targeting debt relief, student mm -hmm. loan debt relief, yeah. um, to address the financial harms of the pandemic um, and also fulfilling that campaign promise that President Biden had made. So the breakdown is the Department of um, Education will provide up to 20000 in debt cancellation for Pell Grant recipients with loans held by the Department of Education. Um, and up to 10000 in debt cancellation to non-Pell Grant recipients. Borrowers are eligible for this relief if their individual income is less than 120000 a year. 25000 25, a year, yeah. correct. Sorry about that. And right. 250000 if you're married. Mm -hmm. um, no high-income individuals or high-income households. Um, and the top 
5% of incomes will benefit from this action. Um, and this is being rolled out. Um, it will also extend the deadline um, for the re student loan repayment mm -hmm. um, to December 31st to give this the, the proper time it needs to be fully rolled out. You know, and, and, and as I was listening, I, because I've been in school for so long, I had a lot of debt as well in, with student loans, and I was yep. very and I'm very appreciative because I still got a couple of loans out there that uh, that he is um, he's done this. A lot of times when you have poor people, and that's why I was appreciative, people didn't pay attention to the fact that when he said if you were a Pell Grant recipient, mm -hmm. you have to be qualified poor yep. to get a Pell Grant. Mm -hmm. He did that, and that was the key that sold me. Because there are some people who took out loans just to take out loans. But when you are when you when you can get a Pell Grant that that shit that, that sh expresses that you you were in need. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to pay your rent, try to buy a home, and pay these student loans. Right. It is very expensive. And, co and it doesn't get to the root of the problem, and that is high, higher education costs. Well, that's why we've seen home ownership go down. Um, I know everyone has seen the stories of, oh, uh, young people aren't getting married, they're not buying diamonds anymore. <laughs> Look, you get one diamond, that's the diamond ring. It's no more diamond necklaces like it used to be, um, or bracelets. But, you know, things have changed and it's had an impact. It's had an impact on uh, real retail um, mm -hmm. as well, too. That's why so many people have, have gone to the Amazons of the world where it's cheaper material, but it's also saving a lot in your pocket as well too mm -hmm. they can't go to the Sears and, and Boscov's and you know those stores the mm -hmm. brick and mortar stores um, but again you know a part of this it, it also um, talks about making sure that you're not paying more than 5% of your income for re, uh, repayment throughout the year for whatever you have left um, and that will significantly bring the payments to be under a thousand dollars for a lot of people right well, I'm, I, I'm hoping that it will certainly help, and not only help, but cause people to see the relief that he's trying to do. Biden ain't responded to a question. I thought he, he, he became his old self, and I loved it. He, they asked him, he said, don't you think this is too liberal to give, give that kind of money back and, and have this at the taxpayer's expense? He said, don't you think it is too um, conservative to give those million and trillionaires right. all the money they gave and you voted for it? Mm -hmm. I, I often think that Republicans forget that we have a memory. And how all while while Donald Trump was in office, the amount of money they gave to to to, to the rich was just unprecedented. Yep. You know, and and they didn't complain then, but they want to complain because you're trying to help the poor. Way with them. Yeah. Next, I want to talk about something here in Delaware. Um, so um, a few weeks ago, the Georgetown City Council voted. Uh, to give $24,750 to the Georgetown Historical Society, um, which is a nonprofit that allows a Confederate flag to be flown on its property. Mm -hmm. Now, the sons of the veteran, uh, er, Confederate veterans, sons of the Confederate veterans mm -hmm. um, are the ones who got this monument erected there. Mm -hmm. um, and Councilwoman Angela Telson um, is the one who made the motion um, to vote for it, and the mayor didn't vote for it. Um, the mayor said, you know, the application came in late. Knowing that he didn't have the votes, he used a procedural rule. He said the, the application came in after the deadline. We can't give them the money. Now, the state has already pulled funding from this. There's a federal law, and I'll, I've, I'll find it, um, there's a federal that says our taxpayer dollars cannot go to Confederate uh, monuments for the sole purpose they are not. The Confederates broke away from the United States of America. Now, people there spoke up in mass. There, there was a ton of people who was there. Um, the NAACP was there. I was there. Um, and we made it very clear that by funding white supremacy, while you're also talking about the fact that your your first responders don't make enough money, that your town's in financial crisis, why are you giving money to a museum mm -hmm. that flag or that yeah, raises we, a flag uh -huh. that is a sign of hatred mm -hmm. against so many in your community? Um, in Georgetown, 
is very diverse. It, black, Hispanic population are huge there. Um, and this majority white council, and, and to quote Councilwoman Towson, if you don't like it, don't look at it. Mm. Um, completely ignored wow. Wow. who they're supposed to be representing. Mm -hmm. um, so there's going to be more discussion on it. Hopefully they get the money back. The way they went about getting the check um, wasn't getting the mayor to sign off on it. Councilwoman Towson picked up the check, walked it to another councilwoman's office, and then drove to another councilman's job to get the check signed by the three council people they need mm -hmm. to go around the mayor. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And we want to know why, you know, we, we need the NAACP and others just to see these type of things and be a watchdog. Right. And the last thing, um, on Friday, um, Governor Carney formally extended the public health emergency another 30 days to allow the state of Delaware and medical providers to continue COVID-19 vaccination, testing programs. Um, and again, this is just, it has become a regular thing. Um, this just also highlights the, the fact that we are not out of this pandemic. We are nowhere close to the numbers of vaccines um, that we needed in arm. Now we have reached a, a huge milestone, but we still need to do better. Yeah. Um, and with all the different variants out there that are now continuing to, to pop up, it's because we lack the fact that we, are, we don't have that herd immunity mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. Um, so until we get that herd immunity, our bodies are gonna adapt. The virus is gonna adapt. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to make sure we're staying vaccinated and staying safe. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I have a member who went on a cruise and she said that she wore her mask and she double masked, but you know, when you're eating and things of that nature, right. you don't wear masks. And she caught COVID. Mm -hmm. And was which was what, what was interesting is that she had just had COVID about a month and a half before. Something about these variants is yep. where you can even Very have been you could you could be um, vaccinated and still catch COVID. And there are people walking around, uh, mm -hmm. no mask or nothing. And I, I whether I go into Wawa, whether I go into the Dunkin' Donut, the supermarket, and I look crazy. But I'm going to wear my yep. mask, and 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 I'm going to continue to get the vaccinations I'm supposed to get. Matter of yep. fact, I said something to my wife today. I shared with her. I said we we are due for another vaccination mm -hmm. because it was it's a it's, it's a it's a virus that is uh, you don't know which way it's going. Right. And you and there's so many variants. Yep. So you just do the best you can with what the science has gotten for us. Yep. Um, and either UD um, is requiring everyone on campus to wear masks for the, at least the first two weeks oh, really? of them being back on campus. Yeah, oh, whether you're in a classroom or uh, labs or um, transportation, you have to have a well, mask Well, you know, on. that's a good idea because you, people are coming from all walks of life. They're coming yeah. from everywhere. And to require that they have masks for the first two weeks means it'll get out of their system. If, right. if they Hopefully. are, you know, right, if they are not... Um, that's good. That's real mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Anything else on the Kobe's corner? No, that's all I have for this week. Oh wow, Kobe. You know, one one of the um, seniors in the um, in, in Dunkin' Donuts saw me, and she loves your part of the show. She said she loved the whole show, but she's talking about your part. She said, "Tell Kobe to just give me a little bit more of the local stuff because she likes when you get fired up." So, yeah. <laughs> look, council is back now, so we're gonna have some more local news. Um, unfortunately, we, for the state level stuff, we got to wait until January 8th um, for them to come back in session. But um, as you know, as different things pop up um, and community issues pop up, I'll definitely be highlighting them. But um, until uh, council um, introduces some resolutions, they're, they're actually they're back. Uh, they had their first meeting last week, but they not having their first council meeting until after September the 1st. Or, or not council meeting, committee meeting until after or, uh, September the 1st. So after that, um, that's when more resolutions and ordinances will come about, um, and we can break those down for you. Good, and that's when the show gets excited again, because yeah. we get a chance to <laughs> put pictures Everyone's, up and things of that nature. <laughs> right now, we're just going on the off season. but we Everyone's been on summer break, yeah, so yeah. Um, as we come back, you know, things are going to be full force, especially um, with the needs of the city and everything. Good, good. We'll be right back. And we're back. 
the last part of our show today, we want to just continue to talk about, we, we, normally it's the salad storm, yeah. but we want to continue to talk about uh, the state representative race, District 1 and District 2. Mm -hmm. So much is going on, it's just really funny. District 1, you got Darby and Namdi, and then we have District 2, where you have Taylor and you have Bolden. And I want to start with Namdi and, um, yeah. and, and Darby because I think that's getting heated up. It is, it is, um, and you're seeing um, a lot of money coming for both candidates, um, whether it's IEs or the, from the candidates' campaign, they're ramping up. Um, I definitely see this as a dogfight, and probably it'll be one of the um, most closely watched races okay. come September 13th at 8 p.m. Um, when polls close. Um, both candidates are, are, I'm seeing, they're lit out on the doors. Um, I'm seeing their volunteers out there. Um, I've been at the debate um, last week. I've been to community forums and listened to both of them. Um, it's clear that now they're they're starting to, to nip at each other even more mm -hmm. um, and go at each other's records and stuff like that. Um, but what I do find interesting is when they have these community forums, um, I like hearing from the community, seeing where the community wants to, you know, what they want to ask about and how they perceive the answers that are being given. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems as though every time at a certain point um, when um, Representative Trequocha seems to be losing his footing a little bit on an answer, um, his brother or his daughter will ask a question to Shade that really just is a straight you know, it, it's a planet question. It oh. straightly goes at her, and it's something negative. Um, Wait a minute. So you're saying that the family members will come in and ask questions of the right. candidate to try to yep. balance it out? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's dirty. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think that's fair, right? Because, look, at the end of the day, I'm rocking out with my family, and anyone should, right? I would hope someone yeah, would yeah, rock out right. with their family. Um, so I don't fault you for that, but allow the public to have that that. Discussion. Well, are they in the districts though? They uh, are. Uh, so, so they are yeah. in the districts. So they, they can always say, "Well, I belong in this district." Yep. But but you you would think that they would f be smart enough to get somebody from the community right. to raise the issue. He has supporters. Yeah, of course. I just don't understand. He why. has a lot of supporters. Both of them have a lot of supporters. Um, but this is what I love about this time, right? So yeah. um, the first district is not a competitive um, district in terms of uh, there is a Republican on the ballot, but this district again, just like. Florida 10th District is overwhelmingly Democratic, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not worried about losing this district to the Republican. So primaries is where you really get to decide which way you want the district to go. Mm -hmm. um, so I love hearing the discourse and, and where everyone's vision is with things. Um, it, it, it's always interesting when you have an incumbent who has a record mm -hmm. um, that you can kind of compare and contrast on what's actually being done and what's being delivered. Um, and, you know, one of the things I just want to say is if someone doesn't deliver until this year, but mm -hmm. been there for multiple years, mm -hmm. but they delivered this year because they thought they were getting a primary, mm -hmm. that shows that they didn't care. They could right. have been delivering all, all the time. All the time. Mm -hmm but chose to because now they have a, a election. Um, yeah. And that's not the type of people I think benefit the community. Um, and then also, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm still upset about a predominantly, actually overwhelmingly black district being represented by someone who wanted to introduce one of the most racist pieces of legislation that we have known in this country as eminent domain. Well, if Eminent you're black, it's not racist. <laughs> yeah, but if you're listening to a racist like Bud Frill, oh, it is. Oh, Lord. <laughs> um, but eminent domain, mm -hmm. redlining, have all been used to destabilize black communities mm -hmm. and destabilize black generational wealth. Right. Um, and for anyone to sit back and say, um, I crafted this, that's sad. Mm -hmm. That is sad. I don't think he understood the political ramifications uh, of, of him saying it out loud. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes people did things, but they don't mean to say it out loud. And I, when we, last week when we did that piece on the show where he talked about, you know, running against me and things of that nature, I, I listened to the whole meeting and some things were said out loud that didn't mean to be said 
out oh. loud. You know, not that you get a pass right. because it's good to know the person's heart, but it's just interesting. And, I, and I'm I'm really closely watching mm-hmm. this. I agree with you, and I, I think it's you know, that's definitely my one of my top races come election yeah. night. Um, another one is RD two. Yeah. Um, seeing how that that kind of plays out. Now, this one is interesting because you have someone who has been there a very long time, mm-hmm. um, who hasn't necessarily been on the right side of everything, mm-hmm. but has delivered for the community, right? Well, let's, let's put a, uh, a little footnote yeah. there. You has not been on the right side of everything. How you look at it. Right. Cause, how, cause, how I look okay. at it, right? All right, okay. Um, but has delivered for vulnerable communities, Absolutely. right? Which okay. I also weigh when I'm looking at someone. Okay. So by delivering uh, free tuition for Dell State, yeah, for in state, that's yeah. huge, yeah. right? Yeah. That's huge for people in the city of Wilmington, especially young black um, Wilmingtonians and just young black Delawareans, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, because one thing, no matter what and where you're at in life, no one could take your education from you. Absolutely. No one could take your education from you. Uh-huh. They could take your shoes. They could take your chain. They could take your phone and car but in your house. Take the but they can't take your education. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so that's huge. Delivering for seniors as well, too. Um, and, you know, being on certain committees. Mm-hmm. I, I, I could tell a politician and what they truly want to do by what committees they want to be on. Mm-hmm. Um, you look at Representative Bowden, you look at our senator, my, well, my senator, um, Darius Brown, mm-hmm. and what committees they're on. You have one on JFC and one on Bond. Between the two of them, they're able to bring a ton of money yes. back to the city of Washington. And they have. And they have, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, not just in one section of the city, mm-hmm. but it has... Since those two have been on JFC and Bond together, it has pretty much been even throughout the city of Wilmington, mm-hmm. which is what we needed, right? We're not saying, oh, give this side all the money. Absolutely. No, we're saying make sure everyone's getting it in an equitable way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, looking at how does that impact the community overall, right? New libraries. Again, circling back to education, workforce development, and stuff like that. Um, Community centers are getting the money they need. Um, You have places like the Team Warehouse um, is getting additional resources. The PAL is getting additional resources. Uh, Neighborhood House is getting additional resources for capital projects, and that's thanks to Senator Brown, right, on the bond committee, which deals with the capital Capital. projects, right, right? Um, which I'm sure you understand the difficulty it is for some um, nonprofits to try to raise oh, that yeah. money. Oh, yeah. um, so having an ally who's able to do things like that is key for the community. Yeah, and and you know that's a very powerful point that you made. Even though I've not heard much about Teller, and 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 the the, the little things that at first you start hearing some things, but you right. didn't hear anything at the end. But Wilmington needs to be clear. You don't want to lose certain people in key positions. And I understood your point right. that there are some voting, some things she's voted for you are not in favor of. Right. But you got to look at the total package. Exactly. And, and again, both Senator Brown and she have been uh, de- delivering people. It's like in church, you know, we say, can the preacher br- uh, bring it home? Well, they've been yeah. bringing it home for, for, for both both of them. Have been and I'm kind of glad. I saw a couple of Darius' signs. So he's up for election, but nobody ran against him. I was really no shocked. one ran against him. I guess him. they yeah. were smart this no time. No one ran against him. I was him. very great. It was interesting. Um, so uh, on the Senate level, um, Senator McBride, District 1, Senator Brown, District 2, and Senator Lockman, District 3, none of them have Democratic primaries. Uh, Senator McBride, District 1, has a Republican opponent. Um, who is everyone's um, favorite sign maker, Scott mm. Walker. He is back. Um, he's the one who put up all the wood signs that said Walker all oh, over the state. Yeah. He's now using cloth signs now. Oh. So he has evolved. He become, um, I, I guess you would say, more uh, environmentally friendly. friendly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But he is back. But um, again, that district is overwhelmingly Democratic, okay. and I, I don't think that one is much concern. 
Mm -hmm. Well, all I w we want to do, uh, you know, as, is that because we got a couple more weeks before we get to this whole election, I do want to continue to talk about the state representative and, and see what's going on. Um, we're going to see, we have our predictions of who probably will win both seats, uh, but we will see which way the people decide to go on. And I hope and trust that you all will make sure you vote. Our brother Kobe have certainly given us all the information we needed in order to go and vote. You can register to vote and 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 vote at the same time you can start you can start voting i think you said next week same. you can start voting early voting um and it, it's just like going to a polling place you just you have to be in the county that you live in okay um so go to the department of elections if you live throughout the county and see which one's closest to you mm -hmm. um but yes you can start voting starting um august 31st yeah that, that that's just huge and it's going to give access yes. to more people voting and i think the more vote it speaks to what the people want. I may have my opinion on who I think should win. I'm one vote. But but you need to make sure you're voting. And I think one of the things, Kobe, we need to do is to start encouraging people. And I hope that, yeah. that, that every, to vote, vote, get registered, vote. Because the more we vote, the, and that's one of the reasons why Republicans are trying to, you know, get away, do away with and suppress mm -hmm. a lot of votes because they didn't want a lot of people voting. But the more we vote, the more powerful we are, especially as African Americans and Absolutely. Latinos and those who are a part of that community. Um, is there anything else you have for us today, Kobe? That's all I have for today. That's all you have for today. That's all I have well, for listen, today. it has been a great show today, and I hope and trust we get ready to get excited because city council is coming back and a couple other things is going to be happening. We also want to announce that we're getting ready to have a new host, uh, Brother Jay uh, Street have. Been been with us. He has been a part of the original crew, uh, a person who have um, uh, uh, opened up this whole source with us, and we appreciate him. He was able to come sometimes doing once a month, then he decided to come in every week, and then he just decided to hang it up. But I, I appreciate what he's done for us. I appreciate what he's implanted in us. Uh, we've been out trying to figure out who would be a great a person uh, to to fill that void that we didn't want just a conversation with just Kobe and I, but we wanted to find somebody else who can just certainly add to the conversation. And we're not going to announce today, but with our new set and trying to really update our, our things, we want you to know that we have identified a person who will be coming and joining our show. And we want to say to our um, county councilman, uh, Street, thank you. Thank yes. you for what you do for the people of Wilmington. Thank you for what you do for the people of Newcastle County. You have been a great hero and continue to be. Uh, we've often picked on you because you were the <laughs> senior of, uh, of the crew here at, at, at The Source. I think I'm becoming the senior now, uh, but I, I don't have not a quarter of the wisdom and the knowledge that you have and have brought to our show, the excitement and the fire. Uh, we try to get it, but we just don't have what you have. But thank you for all that you have done for us. Thank you for what you've done for Wilmington. You are a person that we shall forever remember. And if ever you need to come on the show to set somebody straight, it is always <laughs> open to you. Until the next time we get together, this is Pastor Curry. This is Kobe Owen. See ya. Take care, y'all.